Have you ever been to one of those seeker sensitive churches? You know, on my adventure here from Colorado to Texas a few years ago, I had no idea what kind of learning curve I would be on in this adventure with God, but this is what I'm learning is finding out what the seeker sensitive movement is all about is part of my learning curve. And from just visiting somewhere between half a dozen to a dozen churches here and realizing, yes, here in the Bible Belt of the United States of America, there is a whole lot of false teaching. And how many of you know that in our day and age with all of the COVID pestilence and now there's wars um, and there's going to be greater things that happen in our in our life that are going to um, require a strong faith and a true biblical teaching to get us through our walk with Christ. We need that more now than ever. And so just kind of processing all of this, I want to share with you my experiences with the Seeker Sensitive Church. Okay, so uh, what's strange is that while I'm learning this here in Texas, I um, started digging up things and reading articles and just researching all of these things about the seeker sensitive movement. And I actually found out that it was very resemblant to the church I had been in in Colorado. And I thought, oh my gosh, what is going on? And you know, honestly, it feels like, well, was I believing the right thing or you know what I mean? You start questioning all these things because you realize that the Bible wasn't actually being preached in the way that you thought. And so here I'm going to kind of give you some highlights to recognize the sensor, a seeker sensitive church and then kind of what the Bible says about it and, and kind of compare the early church to it and just go from there. So one of the ways that you know you're in a seeker sensitive church is that the gospel is watered down they're not teaching about repentance or hell they're not preaching about sin or living a holy life it's all kind of this feel good you know jesus is gonna make your life better he's gonna change everything and it's all gonna work in your favor and and, and while I'm not against all of that, there is a huge balancing act that truth and grace have to meet together. And, and so it, it's really a distortion of, of the Word of God. Another thing is that seeker sensitive churches kind of cater to the outside world. And what I noticed is these mega churches, they, and I'm not against mega churches, but a mega church that has like you know it's like a rock concert when you go in there and and there's fog machines and and it's all catered to the outsiders now like i said we're going to get into the early church and how it was when jesus was preaching and and compare and contrast <laughs> but what i encountered was it was this live energetic kind of thing like i said like a rock concert and you know the singing is ecstatic and and the praise and worship is just like on fire and it's all about feelings. It's all about how your emotions feel. And if you felt good that day and you cried or you you got caught up in the worship songs then God was moving, right? The other thing is that these, these churches are, not only is the gospel watered down, but there's no discipleship. There's no teaching the Christian, okay, now you've been baptized. Now let's learn what it means to walk out your Christian faith. And that's what discipling means. It is learning to live a holy life, to look more like Jesus, to put down the things of your sinful life and take up your cross and start walking that out and talking and learning about what that looks like. The Seeker Sensitive Church is all about man how you feel when you come in here you fit in you belong and there's this unspoken message that's like we're just like you bro come on in everyone's welcome here and while i do like the everyone's welcome here message we have 
have to remember that, and I'm going to get into this, but we have to remember that the gospel is offensive, that when people come in to contact with the real gospel of Jesus Christ, it will convict you of your sin. It will cause you to question your life and question your behaviors and question your attitudes. It is not the feel-good message, bro. <laughs> okay? It is the man-made message that the seeker-sensitive promotes. It's not about God first. It's about you first. God's here to make your life good. God's here to change your marriage. God's here to make your life better in 10 steps or less. <laughs> and I know it sounds absurd, but here's the reality. We are not to be like this world. When you are born again into the family of Jesus Christ, one thing is for sure, you are not supposed to look like this world. If you look like this world and we are just like you and you got that me too thing going on, that's not biblical. We're not supposed to look and talk and act like this world. When someone comes into a real church, a expository teaching church that teaches the Bible, not man's Bible, man-made Bible, or the feel-good, seeker-sensitive Bible message. When you come into contact with the real gospel, you, an unbeliever that comes into a church, should be so uncomfortable and really like, oh my gosh, are they talking to me? Telling me I shouldn't be hanging out with this person and living that kind of sinful life and, you know, sleeping around before marriage and living a gay lifestyle like who do you think you are they should feel an offense because the bible is offensive it is offensive this should be the first indicator that these seeker sensitive churches are wrong now let's read what the bible says john 15 19 if you were of the world the world would love you as its own this is a passage to the believers of God, the followers of Christ. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Okay, completely opposite of the seeker sensitive church is saying, hey, we're just like you. Come on in. Catering to those outside of the body of Christ. That's not what church is. Church is a is a training ground for the believers of Christ to train them up and ship them out so that they're multiplying the gospel. They're multiplying the churches. They're taking teams to Africa. And, and not, not that everyone is supposed to do that, but there should be a development of um, leadership, a multiplication of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 1 John 2.15 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him ouch right see this is where it comes to be the truth of the gospel is it is offensive this remember when jesus was preaching and i told you we talk about this later in the early church when jesus would preach when he was preaching to large massive Crowds of people, even some of the people that he taught turned away because they were offensive. Even some of his disciples. John 6, verse 64 through 66. I'll give you a couple of these in summary and then a couple I'll read out. So the summary of verse 64 says that Jesus knew that some of these would not believe him. He knew even some of his own disciples would not believe him. And then verse 65 says, Therefore I have said to you that no one can come to the Father unless it has been granted to him by my Father. Meaning, here's why the secret sensitive movement is so detrimental, okay? Because what that scripture means is that a, a sinful person cannot by themselves come to Christ. The Father has to draw them. Jesus Christ, Father, God, has to draw them, has to enable them to come. He said it right here. You cannot, unless 
It has been granted to him by my father. No one can come to me. So when you're, when you're making this church all about popularity and, hey, come on in, bro, what you're getting is a whole bunch of false converts. People who aren't really following the true God, they're following the man-made gods. The God that makes them feel good, the God that, of money, the God that makes you feel like, hey, life's going to be good, everything's going to be great, God. The one that you've conjured up in your own mind or the pastor has conjured up in their own minds. The summary of verse 66 says that many of Jesus' disciples walked away from him. Think about that. If the seeker-sensitive gospel, which is no gospel at all, is, is true, and, and if, it, if it's anything like the early church, it should be offending the unbelievers. It should make them so uncomfortable. Why? Because the church, and I, I know this is going to bug you, but the church is not made for the outsiders. It's made for the insiders, those who have chosen to come into the family of God so that they can be trained up, discipled, and sent out to multiply the kingdom of God. This is why when they come into the church, because only because God has granted them to be drawn by him, to be, uh, to be, to draw them and to enable them to come to him it is only by his grace in granting that that they come in and when they first come in they're like whoa <laughs> they're convicted of their sin they feel like oh my gosh I and they don't want to stay like that because the Holy Spirit does a work inside of you so these seeker sensitive churches have all these false converts which is not helping anything. The only thing that is helping is the pocket of the pre preachers who are making more money off these people. They're building their churches, yes. Their numbers are great, yes. And there are still a remnant of people, of true believers in those churches. I'm not saying there isn't. I'm just saying that if we compare and contrast it to the way that the actual church was and the early church when Jesus was around, it's nothing like it. So if you're caught up in one of these churches, get out. They're not biblical. They are not leading you anywhere towards Christ. If anything, they will lead you into a compromised state where you're not living a holy life because, hey, bro, you're just like us. We don't need to change. Jesus died for us. He's going to make our life good. We don't need to repent. You do need to repent. You do need to change. You do need to turn from your sin and repent. And if you don't know Jesus today, I pray that he draws you right now, that he enables you to come right now, that you will come to him, that you'll give your heart to him, that you will turn from your sinful, wicked ways and begin today to follow Jesus Christ, confessing him as Lord getting baptized in front of the public to say, this is my public declaration to follow Jesus Christ and not in a watered down kind of way in a true authentic, true gospel kind of way. So if you decided to do that today, I want to pray for you. I'm so proud of you. Leave me a note down below or comment so I can pray for you. I'm not going to single you out or embarrass you. So if, if, if that embarrasses you in any way, you need to really question, <laughs> am I really saying yes to Jesus? Because that's what a, a public declaration is saying to this world. I follow Jesus. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. So I want to pray for you. And I want to say thank you to those of you who always watch these videos, share this video. Because every time you share the video, you're sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are giving people an opportunity to give their life to Jesus Christ. Share this video. And come and follow me on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, MeWe, and now TikTok. <laughs> See you guys next time.